All right, welcome back everyone. So in this video, we're gonna be discussing the tools that I use for photo booth templates. So I'm not gonna bore you with all the different, all the different tools that Photoshop has to offer, but I will discuss the kind of fundamentals of using these tools specifically for photo booth templates. Uh, these, are, these are tools that uh, professionals use for photo retouching, but you're not really doing that. You're doing a lot of uh, blending a lot of that type of stuff where it, you just want to blend the pictures together and you want to make it look nice for your photo booth event. Uh, so if you don't see these tools here, uh, you can go up to the window and you can go to workspace and I have it selected as the default essentials. This works great. You don't need to really uh, mess with all these if you uh, don't want to. Uh, you can also check the color, the layers, and the properties. Those are here on the right hand side. You see properties, uh, color, and layers at the bottom. So very important, those options I do have and I do recommend for you to set up. If you don't see the tools here, and maybe they're on the left hand side, I like to keep everything on the right hand side. So I'll just click and drag this little uh, portion of the tools and I will hover over this blue and let it go to place it there. So now everything's on the right hand side. I don't have to go and click back and forth. Everything's just here and ready for me to use. Okay, so starting off with the first tool, we have the move tool. Uh, very, very easily. It's the, the tool that you can click and drag and move an object on your template canvas. Uh, the next one, you have the marquee tool. I don't really use this one too much, but it's similar to what this magic wand tool does. Um, I This is the tool that I use at the end of the template. This is what I use to cut out the photo boxes that are going to be placed on the template. I use this as kind of like the final thing to make the, the file transparent and easily uh, for people to upload it onto their photo booth software and to place it as artwork for the template. So the next tool I want to show you is the eyedropper tool. So the eyedropper tool is great for if you want to sample a color that's being used on maybe uh, the person's event flyer. So you can upload that event flyer onto your template here. And then you can also sample that color. Maybe you want to use the same similar colors that they have on the template to make everything look uh, like it's, it's matching. So that's what the eyedropper tool will do. And then next one is the brush tool. Uh, before I start drawing on here, I wanna com come down to the bottom right and create a new layer by clicking on this little page. So this will be create a new layer so that I'm not drawing, you don't wanna place all your graphics onto just one layer. You wanna uh, separate them into different layers. So make sure to double click and rename it. So I'm gonna just rename this as brush. Oops. So I'm going to name this brush. So SH and press enter. So now you have the brush layer. And with the brush tool selected, I'm going to choose a different color. So maybe I want something like a light blue like this. And I'll select this color over here and start drawing away. As you can see, it's uh, not so bright and the edges are very soft. Uh, what those edges are doing, they're coming from the hardness here. So I have it at very low. If I bring it up to 100% uh, and I bring up the opacity to 100% and I draw again, a very dark and solid, uh, solid edges is basically what that's doing. So you can see the two opposites of what the brush stroke can do by just adjusting the hardness and also the opacity. So if I bring that down, you can you get two different effects or different effects for each each type of color so lots of different colors that you can choose from and a lot of different adjustments so that's the brush so moving on down you have I do not recommend using the eraser tool I'll discuss uh, mask a little bit later but the, the tool, next one right below the eraser tool is the gradient tool, a uh, very useful tool. So I'm gonna make another layer and I'm gonna double click to rename 
and we're gonna call this one gradient press enter so now with the gradient tool I'm gonna go ahead and choose uh, this color and select this blue so that way I can change the color and let's go ahead and do like a yellow so I'll choose yellow and let's go ahead and do more this type of yellow here and I'm gonna press OK so now you have a gradient from yellow all the way blending to white so you can also change this white too by selecting it and choosing the color here and let's say maybe I wanted to do a you know an orange type of color so you can do a very light orange like that so it looks very bright so if I press OK I can click at the top here you'll see the little cross I'll click and drag down if you don't do anything then you can free freely draw whatever you want to do by doing that if I press uh, command Z on a Mac and redo that by clicking and dragging down by but also pressing pressing and holding the shift button on your key to drag down so I'm keeping it very straight so if I drag it all the way down it gives me a straight uh, gradient of yellow all the way down to this very light orange that we selected so I can press uh, command Z if I wanted to and do this again from the left and right holding down shift and it gives me that perfect uh, gradient so now uh, maybe I wanted the brush strokes to show so I'm gonna bring down this layer uh, right below the brush strokes and so now the brush strokes will show you can also bring down the opacity for uh, whichever layer by just selecting it and going to opacity and bringing it down so it now brings down the transparency of that layer altogether all right so now let's go and move on from the gradient tool we have the smudge tool the smudge tool is great for uh, stretching out certain parts of of a graphic or an image or whatever you're using that has um, I like to use it when I see a sharp edge I like to blend that out so going off of this brush here if I press on the bracket keys if I press the left bracket it'll make the brush smaller for the smudge if I press the right bracket key it'll make the brush larger so I'm gonna bring it down small and then I'm gonna stretch out click and drag click and drag this edge out too so that way I can blend it out so if I were to do this at a bigger size and then I were to do click and drag it's gonna grab a, a more larger portion of that area so just be careful on which size you work with depending on what you need it to do so next one we have the pin tool pin tool is gonna be great for uh, cutting out a specific portion of the layer that you want to to have or maybe from the image or the flyer maybe you want to like take a little portion of the flyer and put it into your your template you can definitely do that by just you know precisely selecting that area and click and drag to stretch out these uh, these little anchors and the little arms that are connected with it that's what the arms do they help to shape the, the anchor points so if I were to just keep going all the way to I reach the edge here and you'll you'll notice a little circle pop open to, dem to uh, demonstrate that it's going to be the closed off portion of this, this little circle that we made. So if I click, it closes everything off. And then now at the top here, I can uh, choose the selection. And then I can press OK. So now it makes a precise selection of where I just drew that pin. So now with that selected, I can go, since I'm on the gradient still here, I can go to the mask and this is what I was referring to when I said that I don't use the eraser tool I like to use the mask because if I were to click on that it does eliminate the background area but also if you notice here it's still here but I can also use the brush tool so with the the, the surrounding area is black and the selection area is white so if you go off of the brush tool and you have the the mask selected 
if let's say I had the black color here selected so if I were to draw on this it's gonna remove more of it because it's adding in more of the mask if I were to switch this by pressing this this two arrows it's gonna make it white and I and I do that again by let's say I raise this up and let's say I, I raise up the opacity here on the brush to a hundred percent so if I were to drag that out it's gonna be erasing or not erasing but um, getting rid of more of the mask to to reveal what's under the mask so the mask is kinda like a paper uh, covering the the portion that you put the the mask over and so I wanna just get rid of some of that mask and kinda blend it in a little bit more but you can also adjust the hardness like I mentioned before here so if I wanted to more a sharper edge you know I can raise up the hardness and get that sharper uh, edge to it so that's what the mask is is doing and if you right click on the mask you can delete delete it or you can also apply it to kind of finalize it so if I were to delete it everything goes back to normal so that's what's great about using a mask instead of the eraser because if you use the eraser you're deleting pixels that you can't get back so if you let's say you did want a piece of the graphic back you're not going to be able to get it back because you erased it so get very familiar with creating mask and also using the brush to reveal or remove some of that mask away so moving on from the pen tool we have the type tool so on the type tool I'm going to create another layer and we'll just rename this by just putting in type and I'll press enter so now let's choose a different color for the type tool I'm gonna go ahead and choose maybe this purple one here magenta press OK and right now I'm selected on this Annabelle it's from the type kit uh, if you're subscribed to Adobe's uh, full lineup of software you can get the type kit I believe uh, I'm not too sure which package they included in but uh, Typekit is very useful because it's commercial uh, use you can use the the templates in your in your graphics and not have to worry about any legal issues so I like to use the Typekit as my uh, source of uh, fonts because it's already included in the package so why not use it but let's say I wanted to use something like this and I click on here maybe this is like a birthday template and I can just type in birthday or uh, type in happy birthday happy birthday and I press the checkbox here to finalize it so I'm gonna press that letter V like I mentioned before on the selection here if I press the letter V there it'll take me back to the selection press V and now I can select the the type here so these guides here are there to kinda help um, keep everything uh, very symmetrical and uh, I like to use them you can get the the guys from going to I believe the rules or snap snap to you can show um, here you go you can lock guides you can do a new guide so they become very useful and when it's um, I like to do the snap snapping is is great because now I can it just kind of snaps it in there and I know that it's lined up perfectly uh, with the template so with this selected I'm gonna press uh, command T on my Mac and that's gonna bring out the transform tool if I hold down option and click and drag from the corner it's gonna keep it in place but also stretch out the the font so I want to keep everything very you know symmetrical and lined up and press enter to finalize it and so maybe I want it there and then you can also press the letter T for the type tool and click and start typing maybe you want to put the, the date so uh, maybe the birth year of whoever this may be so put 1990 if if that's their birth year or you know whatever date the date of the event uh, whatever you choose to put there so I'm going to press the cancel at the top to cancel that out and as you notice once I clicked on it 
it created an, it automatically created a new layer for me. It's not going to really do that for all these other tools, but when you're typing, it kind of does that for you. And so you can just start typing away. And then if you don't want to keep any of this stuff, you can press the cancel at the top. All right, so the last tool is going to be the rectangle tool, similar to the gradient tool, uh, but you can choose a solid color from either going up here. The main thing I like to use the rectangle tool is, is drawing out the boxes that I'm going to be using for the template. So the photo boxes. So to make it easier for me, uh, it doesn't matter which, which fill color I choose. I just choose something that's going to be very bright and that I can see. So maybe something like this. And then, but the stroke one is going to be the one that's um, uh, very important because I go off of the colors that I'm using for the template and I use a very dark stroke uh, if I'm going to be doing something uh, very bright on the template. So, for instance, this uh, dark green one here, you can change, I'm going to change that to uh, maybe like a very dark purple or magenta. So I'll press OK. And then now I'm going to click and drag from this uh, cross here click and drag you'll notice that it just stretches out to freely however you want it to do if I hold shift it's gonna make a perfect box but I just kinda eyeball it sometimes I'll just try to match it up as close as possible and I let go so now if I press the letter V to get back to my move tool I can center this a little bit better and as you can see the guy pops up right there right there and so now I can press the option key press and hold the option key to drag down and it's it's a little off center but if I hold down I'm still holding the option key but if I hold down the shift it's gonna center it and I'm still clicking and holding this box here so all together I'm holding the option the shift and the left mouse click to move this around so now I like to go at about, sometimes I'll do 50 inches or 0 0.05 inches as the distance or I can go up to as far as 100 depending on how much room I have to work with and how many boxes are going to be on the template. So 50 is pretty good. I'll go ahead and put that there. And as you can see it's already becoming a template. So the, the rectangle tool is going to be the last one that I use and or it might be one of the first ones that I use so that way I can judge how many how much space I have to work with within the template by placing these photo boxes here and then what you can do is as you notice here I'm going to press uh, press and hold the option and make another temp another photo box and so as you can see if I drag down it kind of already automatically spaces between the three there. So I'm not doing anything special, I'm just holding down the option, shift, and the left mouse click to click and drag this, this other box out. It's basically copying, when I'm pressing the option, I press and hold the option, and then I click and drag this box. It's making a copy is what it's, what it's doing. So I can delete that. And then what I do here on the, the right hand side is I'll select this one, and then I'll select, I'll press, press and hold shift, and select this one here to group them all together I'm going to go to the folder and create the new group so once I click that button it's going to group them together into one little section so now I can close that out and it makes things a little bit more organized so now I can group I can rename this by double clicking and I'll put photo boxes and then press enter so now you have three boxes grouped together I can press the I to get rid of them or reveal them maybe I want to work in the background a little bit more and I can press the I again to kind of cover that up and give me a full view of what the templates gonna look like you can also resize this folder by just selecting it and I press command T and that will select all the boxes within that folder and now I can just drag this out to shape it however I wanted to shape it if I press the shift I can, I'm pressing pressing and holding shift to drag this out this way, or maybe I need more space, I can just bring this up more, but typically it's like for a three picture template, it's going to be about this much space that you have to work with, because that, it's pretty even on how the photo boxes will look like, and then you, once you're done, you can press the checkbox. 
Uh, maybe you had, if I press Command T again, uh, maybe you had um, these boxes uh, like this. You know, if you want to stretch out the sides evenly, because this is already centered, what you can do is you can press Option, or you can click and move this out. But I'm gonna press the press and hold Option and Shift, and that's gonna keep everything centered, but even on the on the sides here. So now I can just stretch this out like so, and let go of the mouse click. And then when I'm done, I press the Enter. And that finalizes that part. So this is just a quick rundown. As you can see, it kind of looks like already a birthday template. I didn't really do much. I just played around with a bunch of the tools. And um, in the next videos, I'll pretty much be demonstrating uh, different uses for these tools.